Hi, and welcome to this Leverage Technologies presentation of SAP Business One Purchasing and Accounts Payable. This is one of a series of presentations aimed at different functional areas within the SAP Business One application. For those of you that are familiar with SAP Business One, the initial screen as I log in here, I have my KPI or Purchase Quotations dashboard in the centre of the screen typically giving me my KPI information associated with purchase quotations. This is a standard SAP Business One dashboard. And let's not forget that we can also put our own purchasing AP invoice type dashboards and KPIs onto this cockpit view of SAP Business One. On the right hand side, I have my open documents. So if I want to go directly from this initial screen as the purchasing manager, directly to my open purchase orders, simply double click sort the purchase orders, and now I can drill down to the one I want. As I drill down, I can see my purchase order. Of course, I can drill down from here to the item in question, get information about different bin locations where the items might be and what's in stock, etc. So what we're seeing there is the ability in SAP Business One to start at a high level of information and to drill down to more detailed information. Likewise, in terms of my open documents, I've also chosen to see my goods receipts, goods returns, and AP reserve invoices. As a purchasing manager, in terms of my common functions, I may want to go directly from the screen to create a new purchase order or a purchase quotation. And again, I can get that immediate access from this cockpit view. As I look at my activities scheduled for today or my to-do list, I can see Another function within SAP Business One, let's just go down to a document approval, something typically used in purchasing for SAP Business One workflow. Here I can see that I have a pending internal requisition. The arrows represent drill downs in SAP Business One. So let's drill down to that requisition and I can see that there's an internal requisition to purchase a new PC. I can now go back into that requisition and as the potential authorizer, I can approve and say yes, per CapEx 12231. As I update that, that requisition in the system is now approved by myself as the manager and then becomes available to be pushed through as a purchase order in SAP Business One. So what we're seeing there is some typical purchasing type workflow built standard into SAP Business One. Let's now open up the purchasing accounts payable menu structure. In SAP Business One, I can run through various aspects, for example, a purchase request, a purchase quotation, a purchase order with or without workflows and approval procedures, a goods receipt of the goods into the warehouse, and an AP invoice. So I can run through these various steps, or if I prefer, I can simply go in and do, for example, an AP invoice or a purchase order without a purchase request or a purchase quotation. So again, we've got total flexibility in SAP Business One. I can either follow the various steps of purchase request, purchase quotation, purchase order, approval, goods receipt, AP invoice, or I can simply go in at any stage of those documents. If I go to a purchase order, for example, previously created, again, the beauty of SAP Business One, when this purchase order becomes a good receipt, I simply go to copy to good receipt and I say yes, but I haven't received 100, I've received 80 into the warehouse. Add that document in. So a nice and simple way to be able to add that document in. When the other goods arrive, I simply go back in, I copy to good receipt, and I say that the other 20 have now been received. So what I've done then is I've taken a purchase order in SAP Business One, and I have receipted two separate goods receipts into the warehouse. Two separate containers have potentially arrived, and I've receipted the goods on two separate goods receipts. If I want to go back and have a look at that goods receipt, I can see through what's called the relationship map in SAP Business One, that that particular purchase order became these two goods receipts. If I want to drill down to the original purchase order, simply double click on the relationship map 
and there it is. I can see here that the purchase order line is now grayed out for the JB Office Print. And I can see the reason is that those goods have actually been receipted into the warehouse. So effectively, that purchase order, as I can see on the top right hand side, purchase order number 434, is now closed. When raising a purchase order in SAP Business One, I can obviously put into the purchase order various aspects of information. Let's just go and create one and see some of that flexibility that we might have. Let's first of all tab, we'll call up a supplier. Let's just call up another JB Office Print item. Now what I can see here is multiple columns, type, item number, item description, etc. In SAP Business One, I don't have to have multiple columns across here. For example, if I'm not going to use the project column, I can simply go into SAP Business One, the form settings, the table format, and I can scroll down and I can untick the project column. And now the project column has disappeared off the form. The reason for showing you this is to show you that it's nice and easy to be able to change form layouts in SAP Business One. I can change column descriptions, I can add my own columns, I can keep the purchase order as simple as I want, or I can create multiple columns to have a lot of information on the purchase order if I so wish. I've got some things on this purchase order like units of measure. So for example, I buy in cartons, but I might sell in individuals. I might buy in boxes of 12, for example. So just to give you some feedback on the fact that this form, the purchase order form, and likewise, the um, goods re receipt form, AP invoice form, are customizable inside SAP Business One. Other functionality I want to have a chat about today, the purchase blanket agreements, obviously the ability to purchase from a supplier a particular level of stock over a predefined period. So I'm going to purchase 12,000 of these items at a rate of 1,000 per month. The system will then manage that blanket agreement with your supplier to deliver over predefined uh, periods of time a predefined quantity of that inventory item. I can also put through qu purchase quotations in SAP Business One and purchase quotations allows me to ask my suppliers potentially. So let's just pick up a particular supplier. What I want to do, I want by next week, Wednesday, the supplier to have quoted me on they must quote us, please, on a particular item, the office print. And what's the required quantity? 1,200 is what I want him to please quote us on. Add that in. So now what I have is a situation where the purchase quotation module in SAP Business One can help me with managing the quotations that I need from various suppliers. I might send it out to one or multiple suppliers and ask those suppliers, please, to send us a quote. The system will then manage aspects like what quantity do we want to be quoted on, by what time frame, when did the quotes come in, what was the pricing on the quotes. So it's really helping us as a purchasing manager to facilitate the process of sending out uh, requests for quotation effectively. I can do recurring transactions in SAP Business One, so a little different to the purchase blanket agreement. A recurring transaction might be for the next three months, I'm going to purchase on the first Wednesday of every month, 50 of these particular items. The system, again, will automate that process for me. Obviously, in SAP Business One, a full landed cost module. So the landed cost module allows me to say that from this supplier coming in on a container or multiple suppliers on a container, I want to add into the cost of those goods uh, various aspects. So if I'm importing into Australia from overseas and the item costs $10, of course, once I add in other associated costs, for example, freight, insurance, and general costs associated with bringing the goods into Australia, the item may actually cost $12 to get into the warehouse, not 10. So what the landed cost module will do, I've got some items here. I've got multiple costs, for example, insurance, shipping, storage, and weight from one or multiple vendors. The system will then allow me to set up a matrix and apportion the costs associated with importing the goods against the actual items. So again, we don't have to do it that way in SAP Business One, we've got total flexibility, but if you want a true apportionment of the landed costs against the items, then the landed cost module 
is the place to do that. Obviously, with an SAP Business One, multiple supplier price lists and price lists can be imported into the SAP Business One system. Other aspects to cover off in uh, purchasing an accounts payable, obviously, if I go into a supplier in SAP Business One, there's a supplier. I can go into the supplier and I can look at their account balance, for example. If I want to see their goods receipts POs, for example, there they are. And if I want to see them graphically, there they are nice and graphically as well. So again, I'm looking at some purchase history inside the system. And with obviously the ability to drill down to an actual source document as well. So start at that high level of information, drill down to more detailed information uh, as I might need to. Purchasing uh, reports inside SAP Business One, multiple reports, an open items list. So let's just go and look at our open purchase orders. There they are. I want to go to my open returns. There they are. I want to go to my open purchase requests. There they are. I want to go to my open um, AP invoices. There they are. Again, double click, drill down to the source transaction as I so wish. So again, I'm going through that fairly quickly. But what SAP is uh, wanting to give us is quick, easy access to that information, moving around the system, getting the information we want. Imagine you're on the phone talking to a supplier. You can quickly move around and get the information you want when you want it. Multiple purchasing reports, uh, the ability to have document drafts. So I'm halfway through doing a fairly lengthy uh, AP invoice or purchase order. I can save that draft and come back to it at a later time. Or I can save it as a draft and use that draft multiple additional times. I can copy previous documents, for example. I can do purchase analysis. So go in and do an analysis by supplier or by item and then by supplier, for example. So again, those are standard reports in SAP Business One. Let's not forget, as we've seen previously on other presentations, I can also embed SAP Crystal reports into uh, the SAP Business One system to give me things like on time in full reporting for our suppliers so that I can start to monitor supplier performance. So what we've seen there in SAP Business One is the ability to, if I just recap on what we've looked at, I can do purchase requests, purchase quotations, purchase orders with or without approval processes, goods receipts, AP invoices, or I can keep it really simple and just go in and do an AP invoice, for example. I could have multiple reporting options around open purchase orders, around supplier performance. I can use Crystal, SAP Crystal, reports to do on time in full reporting, as an example. I can do my landed costs to add the landed costs into the warehouse of the actual items in question. Now, when I want to do my purchase planning, there are multiple different ways to do this. But one way, and I'll show this just very briefly because there is a separate presentation on MRP, one way I can do this is using material requirements planning and the material requirements planning wizard. This wizard allows me to balance supply and demand in the SAP Business One system. Demand coming from sales orders and forecast demand potentially, supply coming from existing stock, also looking at min-max stock levels, open purchase orders, open sales orders, etc., and balancing those equations to make purchase order and to make production order recommendations inside the system. So I'm not going to go into MRP in any detail now because there is a separate presentation on the Leverage Tech website to cover off on that. But the Material Requirements Planning or MRP is a great tool to assist you with that purchase planning. So thanks for watching the presentation. I hope you found that useful. Please don't forget that there are many other detailed presentations on various aspects of the SAP Business One system, including inventory control and areas which are closely related to the purchasing and accounts payable. And those are available at leveragetech.com.au or at the Leveragetech YouTube page. Thanks for watching.